It's Monday, pun day. We get to work through who were the studs, who were the duds, and break down all the big news from week four. Make sure you, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy the show. Hungering for something new this football season? HelloFresh has got your back. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, your new favorite meal can be prepared in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. In Foot Clan, you want all the NFL games and you want them live, but maybe you can't get DirecTV where you live. No problem. Stream 2021 NFL Sunday ticket on your favorite devices. No satellite required. It's like having front row seats to every live out-of-market game every Sunday afternoon. Sun, uh, NFL Sunday Ticket.tv lets you follow your favorite team. It lets you follow up to 20 of your favorite fantasy players every Sunday on the NFL Sunday Ticket app. You can even watch the games in less than 30 minutes through the NFL Sunday Ticket app. Go online to NFLSundayTicket.tv slash Sunday Ready Now to see if you are eligible. Pro tip, use the code BALLERS2021 at checkout to save 15%. Again, to see if you're eligible for the NFL Sunday Ticket streaming package, go to NFLSundayTicket.tv. TV slash Sunday Ready and use the code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Monday, October 4th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Reacting with you to another Sunday of football. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for subscribing. Or thank following. You, thank you for following. They call it following now. Clicking the little tiny plus that's it's hidden on the so top right. It's so tiny. It's almost impossible to follow a podcast now. Um, but you, if you believe in yourself, you can do it. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. Our fantasy football community has joined the foot.com. Let's talk about this weekend. I have so many thoughts about what transpired. Oof. But why not just, I mean, we could just talk about the... Uh, the undefeated Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> do we have brother. enough time? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. But I do under from what I understand, Sean McVay has he's asked Cliff for some pointers. For some for tips. For some tips. I <laughs> after all these years, he's realized he's been surpassed by the coolest cat in all the land. Uh, a man who can't see in most rooms he enters due to the sunglasses he's wearing. Yeah. Well. That would be Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, he, you Corey Hart it, man. You got to wear these sunglasses and at, at night. Did you see him? They in, don't even look expensive. Well, cause they look cheap. Good, good for you, Cliff. Save that money. Like just, spend it on a house. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> did you catch him in the uh, the the after like the press conference? I uh, some of it. I mean, he's just he's got the shirt. It is just <laughs> so unbuttoned. Like this guy just got back from Miami Beach, the deep V. <laughs> no, I did. It's. it's so good. I did see somebody asked him a question. One of their final like presser questions was, "So did we see? Did we see some new plays out there today? Did we see some new stuff?" And he just like he's just like, "No," because <laughs> I just run the same old crap every week. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, "But what a win for the Cardinals!" Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a one of the storylines. But more importantly, <laughs> we are a fantasy football show, which means we react mm. in the most sophisticated of manners. To what transpired over the weekend. We work out our Well, most of them are bad. So yeah, we work out our disappointment through Some of them are good. Monday Punday. Hmm, yes. How about a nice Koopa Koopa decaf? Oh. We've got Miles out of gas skin. We've got Dawson Knox. That's a good nickname. Yeah. Miles Blanders. Mm. Making his first ever appearance. Oh. Travis Smelsey or <laughs> Travis D. Kelsey? <laughs> Travis D. Kelsey, that that's is, good. That is brutal. <laughs> Sam Starnold. What about Pee Pee Lamb? <laughs> oh, or CD Lame. Uh, CD Sham. We have DeAndre Wift. <laughs> this is my personal favorite. 
Chuba Hubbard. Oh. <laughs> oh. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> Chuba Flubbard. Oh, this wait. is my personal favorite. We have a combo of nicknames here with Fartball Jones. Mm. Fartball Jones. Wait, so we're nicknaming the nickname? <laughs> yes. And then more importantly, the one big name oh. that filled the scoreboard, you have uh, Cordero Pad the Stats. Ooh. Or score Daryl Patterson. He don't need no snaps. He no, just he scores. Doesn't. He doesn't need no snaps. Mm. What one of my highlights of the weekend was uh, Al Borland. You know, we're in a couple. We're in a dynasty league together, league of record. And he comes into the Slack channel after Cordero has his second or third touchdown, and he's just like, "Guys, this weekend sucks." He's like, "In league of record, somebody started Cordero Patterson against me, and I'm gonna lose because of it." Mm. And I started Mike Davis in that same league. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah, and then I said. Hey, buddy, why don't you check the Dynasty League? Because <laughs> I started Cordero against you, too. And how'd that feel? Bad? Real bad. Real bad. Um, no, yeah. Don't, don't worry, Al. I, I make it up to you by starting Cordero Patterson against Andy's son. <laughs> Take that. Yeah, oh, my nice. son was crying most of the night. Because, and just to follow up on what we're talking about, Cord uh, this is a tweet from Adam Leviton. Cordero Patterson scored on 20, or played. On twenty three of seventy six snaps, <laughs> he was <laughs> he played twenty three snaps. If you're a defense and you oh, see him man. running onto the field, I would bet he's, he's going for the he's, end zone. He's going to get the ball. <laughs> he's going to get the ball if he runs onto the field. Why don't all the other players just try to go for the end zone too? I don't know. It seems really they're too easy. tired from all the playing. I mean, to be completely honest, the career of Cordero Patterson is a is a travesty of its own because. He's not better now that he's older. He's the same player, and no one's been able to unleash him. Now, one of those people was Matt Nagy, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> but, I mean, until now, right? what, 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 what were the teams doing? Well, I, We always watched him return kicks and said, this player in the open field is unbelievable. It's unmatched. He's he, been the best kick returner in so football. He has, he has a, a Hall of Fame level. Uh, kick career as a kick returner. Which I agree. We have, you know, there's a couple examples of those players making it in. But yeah, the, the fact that uh, he could be better now. I don't know that now that he's actually getting reps in, in these and in, he's in these meetings, you know, with the running backs, with the wide receivers, and maybe he just he's finally learned some some skills of the Look, trade. Arthur had a plan for Cordero. Oh, I I think he stumbled into a plan. Oh <laughs> yeah. my gosh! I think yeah. the plan was Mike Davis. You know, it's funny is he, he he's almost he's. He's the wrong like size for a running back and for a wide receiver. He's kind right. of like this in between guy that they never really know where to put him. But if you look at his utilization, it's it's one of those things where you go, well, man, they really figured out. He's kind of give him a bunch of carries and mostly use him as a wide receiver, and that's kind of. Ha but you look back at the last couple of years, that's how he was used. So I I do think that what's happening is, I mean, you watch him on the field. We said this from week one. He looked great. Just looked like he had juice as a guy that I think can be, you know, flexed in any given week, even though he is obviously right now, I think he's the running back two on the season. A bajillion um, touchdowns will do that. Yes, but I do think he is, um, he's not quite the level. Well, uh, he's not the two the rest of the season. Right. Yes, exactly. He is, uh, I think, a, a, a running back two uh, flex type of guy every week, but he's probably just out, out producing his um is everything ever yeah his talent <laughs> yeah i mean i think he's a lock to start in your lineup rest of season whatever that means you yeah. can we can debate whether that's flex or rb2 or whatever but mm -hmm. i mean his catch in the end zone that was a pro wide receiver catch that uh, wasn't a running back also you should yeah uh, mike davis did score a touchdown you should trade him right away like wayne gallman was active out there getting snaps this is Okay. This is going to be a disaster. Yeah, I mean, I feel good. We told people get Cordell early. Yep. And just it's worth it. It's worth seeing what happens there. And in a lot of ways, the explosive games that you thought you'd get out of Kyle Pitts as the two, as the second best option, you're getting out of Cordell. So uh, we'll talk all about it. We got studs and duds mm -hmm. on the show today. Let's talk news first. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Joe Mixon has been diagnosed with a low-grade ankle sprain. It will leave him week to week. Uh, we have a waiver show tomorrow. Samaj P. Ryan 
may make an appearance. You know he will. Urban Meyer. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> We're not talking about that part. We're not? No. Urban Meyer made headlines this weekend? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, DJ Chark will be on IR. Urban Meyer, he apologized for being a distraction. Oh. Did he apologize for being a bad coach? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I've been a distraction. Uh, hey, Meyer, what about your coaching? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that, too. My bad. Uh, I guess we won't talk about it. David Montgomery had a hey, great man. game against Detroit. Jason said his, his entire weekend spiraled with this injury. Uh, knee injury. The I, Bears believe he avoided a torn ACL. I mean, he he did the the, the nice thing. He yes. got all the points. Then he got hurt. And he did the extra nice thing of not having a torn ACL. But I tilted off the face of the planet, having just traded for him f with, from my division mate Andy, mm -hmm. and then being like, I took this player who's about to get injured from your team and added him to my team and got rid of Stephon Diggs. But it is great news that is he did avoid the the torn ACL. Probably miss uh a couple of weeks definitely will miss week five we'll we will see uh, do, do you have any extra hope because of what happened with his groin situation last uh, year honestly when when watching him on the ground like his reaction you know usually you could tell from a player like their face it's that player knows they're they're out they're not coming back and david montgomery looked like a man who knew that his season had just ended. I want, but I want he's to got some kind of Wolverine situation going on. I want to be clear, though. We don't know that he avoided an ACL. No, we don't. The, the MRI is coming today. The fear is that maybe it's sprained MCL bone bruise. They don't believe he tore the ACL, but we don't know. Yeah, that's a really good point. I remember falling for so this be trap once before. But but uh, to, just to speak to the hope, teams, if it is, they know right away if it is an actual tear. So for them to believe that or hope that it's not, that's still better than an obvious. They they do the the quick test on the side and go, oh yeah, that's a torn ACL. Yeah, yeah. Further testing today, we'll find out. He's Hopefully going. He's, he's okay. going to miss time. Yes. that's the headline. Damian Williams will be the starter when Montgomery misses time. He had a, a thigh bruise, and what Khalil Her Herbert, Herbert yeah. ended up with some some reps. Um. Damian Williams, like I said, the thigh bruise, so we'll see if he's okay, but he should be. Teddy Bridgewater concussed, left the game, didn't return. It was a nasty shot. And he needs to be back for this team yeah. to have relevance. I, I feel so bad for Fireball Jones uh, making it into the Monday Punday. Not his fault. This was actually a game that I think they could have won if they could have just gotten some things figured yes. out on offense. They were playing some pretty good defense in that game. Jimmy Garoppolo. He did not uh, return. He suffered a calf injury. If you watch the press conference with Jimmy G, he got emotional about it. Yeah, I feel bad for the guy. He talked about the fact that he's just getting old, like these injuries, and he kept trying to play through it. Um, he's going to miss some time, probably two weeks, maybe more, maybe maybe the rest of the year if Trey Lance takes a stranglehold of the position. Trey Lance's performance when he came into the game was up and down. Mm -hmm. Like you saw a lot of the play-making ability. Um, he had a 80 yard touchdown pass to a player that was not being covered by anybody. Um, yeah, broken coverage, but, uh, some shaky passes throughout the rest of the game. Yeah. He, he looked like he was not ready to come into the game. His first few passes were horrifically bad, but, but, but we're a fantasy runs. football show he and he scored, uh, d depending on your scoring format, but essentially 28 points. In a half of football, I mean, this is this is big time. Yeah, the the headline and why he was Mike's my guy, why he was talked up for fantasy the whole off season is because he is one of those guys that could come out and rush for eight hundred plus yards on the course of a seventeen game season, and those guys break fantasy uh, because of the way that the quarterback mm -hmm. scored in a half because he didn't play the whole game. He had seven for forty one on the ground. That's that's what matters. You're not always going to have the broken coverage. Uh, of a wide open Debo, uh, but he can always run. Well, and he, he did have, I mean, he had a big play in preseason on a similar type of play. I would expect Jalen Hurts level production from Trey Lance at, when he starts. Agreed. Um, he'll be in Arizona next week. That'll be a challenge, but he'll also have Kyle Shanahan in a week of prep. So, uh, yeah, he is, he's an auto start. Oh, um, is that, yeah. So Brooks, I mean, we're, we haven't seen the quarterbacks tonight, but currently the quarterback 12, on the week who played a half of football. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Logan Thomas exited with a hamstring strain. Mike, early in the game, you were like, where's Logan Thomas? Yeah. That's all Ricky Seals-Jones. Yeah, I had missed the note that he left, unfortunately, but yeah. So Ricky Seals-Jones, I mean, they were, they were going to him. Will Fuller, hand injury, exited early. What's new? Tony Jones Jr. carted off the field with an ankle injury. Mm, yeah. Um, that's not good. Did you, did you catch the uh, the Alvin Kamara stat line? That's not good. <laughs> I did not, but what, I would like what, to What was I the final like stat line? Uh, I believe it was his uh, career high. I know it, the game went to overtime, but career high in attempts because he had 26 and a career low in targets with zero. That's not a lot. What are we doing? What are we doing, New Orleans? And uh, to be clear, the New Orleans Saints lost the ball game. And also to be clear, to the Giants. <laughs> Throw Kamara the ball. It does seem like that would be that would work in everyone's advantage. The quarterback, the Alvin Kamara. Very bizarre. Not to the Giants. <laughs> right. Right. That's, that's okay. Okay. Did, did, was there like a gentleman's agreement before the game? Like Joe Judge went up to Pate. He's like, we want it. We want to have a fair game. Sterling Shepard's so, out. Can, uh, yeah, we got some guys out. Just don't throw to Kamara. Deal. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> spit, spit, spit handshake. Spit, spit handshake. Uh, yeah, the Giants. The Giants, I, I was telling Mike yesterday when we were watching, I mean, Daniel Jones has been fine so far, and they're an okay team. I mean, they're just – they're not a pushover any week that you play them. No. And, which it, is um, a step forward. And Kadarius Tony had a very solid outing for his first, like, Real full game action. If He's you watch, got juice, if man. you watch the clips of him, he his change of direction is pretty much like Tyree Kill. I don't think he's as fast as Hill, but we it again. We going back to what we said last week of of uh, Tony's a good player. Like he has juice. I, He's you see, really good. You see why he got drafted really in the first good. round. It just it didn't make sense for the Giants at the time. But now they now that everybody is hurt for New York. You have a real opportunity for Kadarius Tony to, to take over. All right. That was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Make sure you grab the Sleeper app, join the breaking alerts channel, and um, you'll get the latest news faster than everybody else. So off to the stud muffins we go. This week's fantasy stud muffins. You don't need us to tell you, but Patrick Mahomes is pretty good. Five touchdown passes, and uh, he's Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. I, 278 the, yards, five touchdowns, and Travis Kelsey has a bad game. <laughs> Come on. Travis D. Kelsey. Yes, Travis D. Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, he was outstanding. <laughs> you had another you know, had another receiving touchdown for Clyde. Mind you, it was a, one of those sweet underhand shovels. It was bowling. But, uh, hey, that happens in Kansas City. Sam Darnold, through four weeks, has been a good fantasy player. Yes, he has. And he keeps running in touchdowns. He had four total touchdowns in this game, 301 yards. He's the quarterback six. Yet another example of yeah. being free yeah, of the Beal. Like, I, I mean, come on. And it was just like a fun little joke of everyone who escapes Adam Gase, they become a good player. For this turnaround through four games for Sam Darnold, how was this not – like, can we? This Number is peer, two. This is peer reviewed. This is scientifically scientifically accurate information. Now that Adam Gates at least a stage two is, trial. Is, he has to be the worst coach in the history of the NFL. That these players uh, who are, I would, I would, I, I believe his high school that he is coaching at is getting <laughs> torched. So I would not just say NFL, but continue. It's just like Donald looks good. He's, I don't know, this, this, it's unbelievable the turnaround for Darnold here. They did lose their first game to Dallas this week, so. Uh, that that game showed me. Trayvon Diggs. Uh, oh, man. T tell me if you guys agree with this, but th when I watched that game, um, I felt like both teams answered the question of whether they're real or whether they're, you know, because. Uh, it's hard to say, okay, the Cowboys, their right. defense has really gotten better mm -hmm. and that they're they're a really good team. And then, of course, because Carolina was so bad last year, it's hard to say, yeah, their defense is great. They you know they played not the toughest schedule. But these two teams really competed the whole way, and on a on a play-by-play -play level, they look like quality football teams. Dallas is one of the best teams in the NFC for sure. I think they're going to be a threat. They They have enough on their defense now to make plays. And really, that's like – 
there aren't a lot of shut shutdown defenses in today's NFL. You need to make you, you need to have a turnover here, a turnover yes, there, agreed. a sack there. Um, impressed. Matt Ryan had his first good fantasy day. He was over forty fantasy points in our league. Thank I know you, that. Thank you, Cordero Patterson. And uh, Jets next week. He looked better. Yeah, like, uh, like the eye test of Matt Ryan playing this game. You you said, oh okay, you're not horrifically bad. And the and the twenty five for forty two. I mean, you had. <sighs> I can't, you know, at least a handful of opportunities where he hit Calvin Ridley on what should have been a good deep completion. Ridley just unfortunately didn't come up with it. Jalen Hurts, Taylor Heineke, Dak Prescott, all big games for fantasy players. Jalen Hurts, man. He's the quarterback three on the season. His rushing baseline makes him safe. We've seen games where he doesn't throw a touchdown, and he's fine. In this game, he had three touchdowns called back on penalties, which is like you know, forty-eight it, pass attempts. This team is—they don't like to run. Th well, they're, they're not—they're not a good team, but it doesn't matter for fantasy. He has enough these tight ends, and then Devonta Smith. Yeah, he seems like they're. I don't—I don't see him stopping his production. Agreed. Uh, anybody else at the quarterback position you guys want to mention? I mean. Russell Wilson only passed for 149 yards against San Francisco. Yeah, the the Pete Carroll offense is back. Yeah. They they let us have the fun for the first couple weeks, and they're like, whoa, 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 slow it down. This still is too much production. Still had three touchdowns. Very well, yeah, it, Jameis Winston. Well, no, it's very <laughs> it's very Russell Wilson. Like he's a super efficient quarterback. His touchdown rate is is much higher than the average. His career touchdown percentage, but you know it's it's you get – this is how we end up getting the ebbs and flows of where Tyler Lockett just disappears. Which is the last couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then the last guy worth saying anything about, Kyler, is on pace for 5,400 passing yards. Oh, man. Oh, and then he runs the ball and rushing touchdowns. Oh, it's just – I thought we were going to talk about Trey Lance some more. No, nah, but... no. Nah. But before we talk about the running backs, I want to thank today's sponsors. I want to thank Tushy, the modern bidet company – Washing away even the messiest of poops, leaving yes. you with a better clean than toilet paper. Uh, I have used a bidet. We, look, if you've listened to the show for any yes. amount of time, you know we are all bidet bros here. I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I, I don't want my life going backwards to non-bidet. Let me ask you a question, Foot Clan. If you got a little bit of poop anywhere on your body, <laughs> you, you, put your, you put your elbow in a little bit of poop. Uh-huh. You just grabbing some toilet paper and wiping it off? <laughs> this is good enough. That's insane. <laughs> no, of course you're not. You're washing it. And that's what you should do for your bum. The Tushy Bidet features it. Look, it, it, it's going to wash your bum with water for a better clean than toilet paper. Uh, it's going to be less irritating, more soothing for your pee hole. It's easy to install. There is, it attaches in under 10 minutes. There's no, electric <laughs> no electricity, <laughs> no plumbing needed. It is very, very easy. You're going to save money on toilet paper because you just need enough to pat it dry and they have the tushy ottoman the sleekest toilet stool designed to help Ooh. you poop at 100 percent, 100 percent of the time very regal. rated number one by wire cutter so you can start washing with a tushy bidet for a better clean go to hello tushy.com slash footballers to get a 10 percent off plus free shipping it's a special offer just for the foot clan at hello tushy.com slash footballers for 10 percent off after you buy and install your tushy Show it off. Tag us at uh, hellotushy.com on Instagram. And we want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best men's grooming equipment out there. Uh, they've been a longtime sponsor of the show. Love Manscaped. I have all of their gear. It's how I make sure that my grooming is top notch. And the world, look, the world wasn't ready, but it's here anyways. The performance package 4.0 for Manscaped. It's here to help you get ready. It's got the brand new Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. They got deodorants, toners, yeah, and you get two free gifts, performance boxer briefs and the Shed Travel Bag. The performance package 4.0 for Manscaped is the perfect, it, it, it is the perfect package. Like the, the performance package, that's the best name that they could give because it is the best men's grooming equipment out there. Like I said, the Lawnmower 4.0, it's the best body hair uh, trimmer out there. Because the the technology they have on there, it's got a 4,000K LED spotlight to make sure you're not, you know, trimming where you shouldn't be. And it, they the the tech on there prevents from all the the nicks and the and the little scrapes and things because they care about your body. And if you want to get 20% off, 
with free shipping. Use the code FOOTBALLERS20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS20. Manscaped. All right, let's talk about the running back studs for week number four. We talked about Cordero. I just want to highlight something. In the last three games, I don't care about the snaps. I care more about the targets. And Cordero over the last three games is on, here's his receiving pace. 107 targets, 90 receptions, 1,258 yards, 23 touchdowns. Uh, that's a pretty good wide receiver. So, uh, you know, you had a, a – a very big target vacuum when it came to Julio departing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, Russell Gage, Kyle Pitts. It, it's, it's, it's Cordero. Well, Kyle so, Pitts was getting some of those targets, at least. Yeah, well, he has every week. He, he has not gotten into the end zone. If he had gotten into the end zone one time in those four games, we'd be feeling different about him. But uh, Patterson, six for 34 on the ground. He counts as a running back. He plays like a wide receiver. Mm-hmm. And Mike Clay tweeted out, if Derrick Henry didn't exist, Patterson would be the number one scoring fantasy running back by nine points. Whoa, brother. So uh, he he is locked into your lineup. You don't need to ask questions. You don't need to wonder. Uh, wait for him to disappoint you. Don't wait for him to perform on your bench again. That yeah, would be stupid. I would agree. I would I would say, and this is not, again, I've, I've talked about, you know, trading high on some of these other guys. Um, it, this is not saying you should trade and capitalize on Cordero Patterson and get rid of him because he's going to suck at all. But if you can trade the new hotness for a proven commodity, I brought up last week, like trading Cooper Cup for Tyree Kill, and I had a lot of people say, I offered it and it was rejected, and I had a lot of people say, I did it. You better not let me down. If you could trade <laughs> someone who is if, if only for a stud, you know what I mean? Like, if don't trade down from Cordero Patterson, but if you can turn him plus something into an Ezekiel Elliott or something that is more of a known commodity, I would personally do that. You should. You should definitely do that. I mean, and uh, would you trade him for DeAndre Swift? I mean, DeAndre yes. Swift just had an awful week. Like that is a you go Cordero for DeAndre Swift, you can get deals done around that framework. I would do that. Jonathan Taylor? Yes, I would do that. Mm -hmm. Antonio Gibson? Yep. Yes. Okay, so these are targets that you could you could look at, um, and again, that's not to say you can't just play him, but proven commodity mm -hmm. and somebody who's not scoring an average of twenty three receiving touchdowns over three <laughs> weeks. Oh, Patterson, David Montgomery. Uh, he was very kind. He gave Jason start of the week uh, twenty three for one hundred six and two against Detroit. I mean, it was lining up as a great matchup. He performed, got hurt. Zeke is the RB4 on the year. All you panic-driven wow. Zeke haters out there. I mean, he's been great. Vintage Zeke. And if you look, Dak didn't throw the ball a lot. Did you notice that? I mean, this was a competitive oh, yeah. a game they were winning. He did not. He threw the ball 20-something times. I mean, this was Ezekiel Elliott's averaging 6.4 yards per carry over the last two weeks. He's the guy. The beginning of the game, I was really surprised by McCarthy's game plan. It really looked like, you know, it, just they were running nonstop. And, and it was really not Cowboys looking, you know, of, of late. You you know, you're, you're just so used to Dak having to throw it 50 times uh, to play catch up. So, yeah, I, I think Zeke is uh, you know, obviously going to be a great, option the rest of the way. I think that's part of what makes Dallas so dangerous is they can they, their offense can beat you both ways. Not and not many teams have that ability to say, okay, you want to you're going to put a whole bunch of DBs on the field? Fantastic. Our offensive line in Ezekiel Elliott will just smash the ball or if you want to you want to stop Zeke, we have elite wide receivers here that and then Dak can beat you through the air. I mean, if you look at what Tampa Bay's defensive front does against everybody now, right? No one runs. I mean, you cannot run on them. I believe Damian Harris was like four for negative two or something like that yeah. on the ground. Dallas was able to turn that into a just a passing affair. They almost won that game against Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. But here's Zeke's yards per carry for the first four weeks. Three, and then in week two, he was 4.4. .4. Week three, he was 5.6. Week four against Carolina, he was 7.2. Oh, if these so, trends continue. And, and they unlocked <laughs> Philadelphia, right? Like the running game unlocked them, and then they figured that out. He's been outstanding. 
So 10 uh, yards per carry uh, this week? That's what I heard. Here's a player to discuss. Super confusing. Second straight week that Clyde hits the 100-yard mark. Yeah. He's 14 for 102. Looked good again. Also had a receiving touchdown on only three targets. Two for 12. So the confusing part is there were multiple times in this game that Mike and I were staring at the screen going, did Clyde get hurt? Yeah, because Darrell Williams came in for full drives, came in for goal line, came in all all throughout the game. Well, so the let me the snap counts just to illustrate your point here. On you know week one when he was disappointing, he had seventy two percent of the snaps. Week two when he was disappointing, he had sixty five percent of the snaps. These last two weeks, he's been much better. It went down to sixty two and fifty two percent of the snaps this last week. Even though again back to back weeks. With 100 yards rushing, 7.3 yards of carry, 5.9 the week before, looks good on the field, utilized less, scoring a touchdown each week. And, yeah. I, and I think that's the real, like, for fantasy purposes, you take those touchdowns away and you're going, okay, he didn't destroy my week. He was, he was good on the ground, but you're not excited. So th is this a trade high on the touchdowns is my question for both of you because you mm -hmm. had you ha he, he hasn't scored a rushing touchdown this year. He hasn't been a traditionally high-scoring rushing guy. Darrell Williams came in and got the goal line. He Which managed was a, a shame because Zeke because uh, Hyde went down on the one. Clyde did. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, Clyde went down on the one to to set that up. Ugh, he's so yeah. close to the touchdown. So, at this point in his career, he's scoring a rushing touchdown every sixty carries. Um, it does seem like if you're a believer in Clyde, you can hang on. If you're not a believer, you maybe have you've been given a window. Maybe to, to, to deal him. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I am a believer in Clyde, but I would still be willing to shop him. Again, trade up. Don't just try to get something Antonio for Gibson. him. But, yeah, if, if you could trade uh, – Antonio Gibson, I think, is is fine. I, I would I probably make that a similar move. tier. But yeah, I would agree. It's very, very similar. James Robinson. No, no. I would not go to James Robinson. Chase Edmonds. Um, no, no, this is not a, this isn't a one-off. This would remind me a lot of what we were talking about with Corderell Patterson, pair him with someone and try to trade up, try to, try to get into a Dalvin cook or Ezekiel Elliott. And you know, now that you've got back to back weeks with hundred yard rushing and a touchdown, uh, it looks good. This coming week against Buffalo is probably not going to be great for Clyde. Jonathan Taylor hey. ends up, ends up 16 for one three and one. Naeem Hines left the field a couple times due to injury. Uh, finally got into the end zone. Mike started the week and then has Baltimore, Houston, San Francisco the next three weeks. Feeling okay about Jonathan Taylor moving yep. forward? Yep. Mm -hmm. Najee Harris, 15 for 62 and one. Seven targets, six for 29. He's the RB6 on the season now. Um, He did drop the 80% of snaps, but he's... Like, to me... <laughs> That's out, so funny. Outside of, like... Derrick Henry, who I would want more than anybody for a guaranteed touches. Like, who else is more guaranteed every week than Najee Harris? For touches? Yeah, I mean, like, that. I, I just mean, feel Kamara, like... I yeah. would have said Mixon, and, and it still is, but he he was obviously gone on a lot of third downs. Yeah, I mean, Najee is right there. The team is putrid. The offense is awful. Big Ben is... Oh, man. Just... Whew. Have we had a mid-season retire from a <laughs> from a starting quarterback before? Um, but Najee is – he's just <laughs> – like the upside is not there as far as like just top three back. You know, you bring up Derrick Henry just uh, wrecking fools, but the floor is so high. He only lives on, sec on the second story. I think I yes. would – He doesn't come downstairs. I, I like I, – I'd be targeting him. Who would you rather have? Because we, we, we glossed over Saquon, who had a monster, monster performance. Saquon by a lot. But Saquon looks completely back and healthy. Uh, did it through the air. Did it on the ground. Uh, we said it was going to take some time, and it did, and he's ready. Tyreek Hill, Debo Samuel, DJ Moore. Hey, DJ Moore. What's that? How many touchdowns? A two for DJ Moore. That's right. Sam. Dar this is why Sam Darnold's great, because he – he has a best friend, and his name is DJ Moore. And if you're watching the game, like DJ Moore could have had two more touchdowns. Where Sam Darnold just missed him again on a on a on a deep pass where Moore would have housed it. And then, if I'm not mistaken, he had Moore more, Moore went down on like the three he, or or something. Oh, it was closer like, now. He reached with, for the pylon and was just barely so out. 
the DJ Moore, the the breakout is real. I think DJ Moore is going to end up the wide receiver three at the, on the, at on the, the end season? of the year. I do. I think Tyreek and Devontae Adams will be above him. But I think DJ Moore will end up the the wide receiver this three. This is so fabulous. When a, when a player finally gets the opportunity to be that the player like I've can I can we've I, all seen this can for I bring years. up something absolutely ridiculous mm, sure last year our three wide receiver my guys oh yes were Debo or I'm sorry were Cooper Cup I had Cooper Cup Jason had Hollywood Brown and you had DJ Moore yeah and this year those three it players it didn't work out that great but we <laughs> saw something and yeah. this year it was like it's like the delayed reaction unbelievable season so far and Debo oh my gosh 12 targets Eight for one fifty six and two, wide receiver three on the year. This is why I was the lone person that yeah. said I would not play Brandon Ayuk last week is because of Kyle Shanahan and how he builds a game plan. It didn't matter what quarterback was out there. Debo Samuel and George Kittle are going to be priorities in game plan building for Kyle Shanahan ahead of Brandon Ayuk rest of season, unless they get hurt. Which both of them, they love getting hurt, but thus far they haven't. Um, we didn't think we'd see George Kittle, but we did. Yeah. So he what, had he had eleven targets. Do you realize? Oh, that? he barely missed a couple of big plays too. Yeah, he looked great. He didn't finish great. No, though. yeah. He's, another uh, another better dud. than he finished. Yeah. He had he had a play where he got. I I didn't get the screenshot on his face for the play, but he had a play where he got bent over and it looked like his knee was about to get destroyed, and his face said, "I'm very afraid right now." Mm. He ended up running off the field for a play, and he was okay. Um, McLaurin, Terry McLaurin is great, elite, 6 for 123 and 2. Uh, Randall Cobb, hello. Hey. Uh, six targets, 5 for 69 and 2. He almost, I mean. <laughs> if if Will Disley had come through, Andy, he was, he was in the running for the milli again. Yeah, he got me up to 35th because Randall Cobb was, look, it, it was setting up that way. They like Randall Cobb. People were on Twitter. They were like, "Oh, is this time for? Is it Lazard, the Lazard King time?" Mm -hmm. I said, "No, it's Randall Cobb time." Aaron Rodgers didn't sign until he asked Randall Cobb to come back. They made who's ever forced a trade to get a wide receiver back on a team? Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and so this is not. He is going to be on the waiver show. Yeah, for sure. He belongs what, there with MVS placed on the IR, mm -hmm. and you know he was getting targets. He was getting. Uh, he, he wasn't that great for fantasy, but if you watch, he was he was uh, very involved in the offense, and now that that job is going to Randall Cobb. Yeah, and MBFs was bottom three in terms of catch percentage, so maybe we'll see a switch or at least a priority given to Randall Cobb, who having a go-to guy. Uh, Hollywood Brown, four for 91 and one, had a great long touchdown. He's the wide receiver, 10. And he caught it. Oh, not only did he catch it, he had to lay out yeah. to get that. That's what you need to do. Don't put it in his hands. But it just out of reach. Make him go get it. <laughs> uh, Van Jefferson had a nice game, six for ninety and a touchdown. He's very hard to recommend. He has a dart throw every week. Van Jefferson yeah. can be relevant every single week of the year, but he's still difficult to recommend because I went to that well in DFS for two straight weeks and nothing happened. And then this week I went away and he's great. Uh, Justin Jefferson, six for eighty four and one. He is so good at football. Thank goodness for that first drive for the. Minnesota Vikings. That game was. He's just bigger than you. Mo Alley Cox, two touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. Yes. Two touchdowns for. He didn't jump. His vertical leap has got to be somewhere in the one inch range, but. Which means he can only reach 12 feet in the air. I mean, and unbelievable. One of, the, one of the targets that he did not come down with was another end zone target yeah. that he just barely missed. I don't know how his giant hands didn't catch the ball. It probably hit the bottom of the upright. If I, his hands probably hit the bottom of the upright. Oh, uh, you like jammed a finger? Yeah, he jammed yeah. a finger. Um, Dawson Knox, awesome Knox. Oh, brother. Mike, start of the week, right? Yeah. Eight it, targets, five for 37 and two. He's the tight end five right now. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to have to talk about him on the waiver show because you it, look it's, at – It's legit. Yeah, you look at his his uh, actual usage, mm -hmm. and he is involved. It's, it's kind of similar to Max Williams, who – has been very involved, Dos Equis, for the Arizona Cardinals. It's you don't you just don't want to believe that Dawson Knox and Max Williams are things. I have a real hard time believing it because over the last couple of years, both teams have just not utilized the tight end position at all. 
these players were there, so right. it's not like, you know, oh, well, they signed this guy and now he's great. It's like, are you tricking me? But they're they're on the field, they're, they're running routes, and they've been productive for three weeks in a row. Max Williams in the last three weeks is 15 for 179 and one. So if you look at targets on the year for the Cardinals, I'm going to give you the targets. Hopkins, 25. Green, 24. Kirk, 18. Moore, 18. Max Williams is at, uh, I think, 16 for the Cardinals. When your quarterback's on pace for 5,400 yards, there's plenty to go around. Yeah. And, um, I mean, the Cardinals could have – I mean, I was thinking about this. They could have – I probably won't have it with Rondell Moore, but you could have 4,000-yard receivers. That would be wild. Because of the extra game, mm -hmm. right? Like you're pacing out. I think they're all pacing over 60 a game. But uh, we can talk about – well, let's talk about Hopkins later. Yeah. Um, other tight ends that look legit. I mean, Max Williams, like we said, Dalton Schultz is legit. I mean, Dalton yes. Schultz is involved every single week. He's looked to around the goal line. So you got to add him to the list of, of players that you can put out in your he, lineup. He has established himself uh, in the behind-the-scenes stats, kind of the, the snaps, the routes run ahead of Jarwin, who had a touchdown in his own right. Um, but he is the one – you know, it was like a who's 1A, who's 1B. I think it's 1 and 2 now, and Dalton Schultz is the 1. Yeah, and he even had a couple of uh, near fumbles. I think he had like back, almost back-to-back -back plays where it was they had to go to the review and be like, oh, okay, he was actually down. But but he's he is their guy. Three of the four games, he has seen six or more targets. Well, he's got 23 on the year. Jarwin has like 13. Yeah. And he's caught twice as many passes. So Jason's right on that. Goddard. Nice game. Could have had another touchdown. Five for 56 and one. Uh, Zach Ertz scored again, too. Uh, it's worth mentioning. He's done that two straight weeks. This is who he's throwing to. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's throwing to Goddard's. Yes, the that's, two of them. That's, I yep. mean, you can play either one as a as a tight end and just hope for the touchdown. And then Noah Fant ended up with 10 targets, six for 46 and one. Um, you know, are you worried if Teddy B is out? Sure. Yes. Yeah, I'm worried. Mm -hmm. Of course – if you're not worried when Drew Locke runs onto a football field. The only person in Denver not worried if Drew Locke is the starting quarterback is Drew Locke. But, but to be fair. I think he's a little worried. No, oh, no way. He, he's that not guy worried is, about anything. He is unshakable with yeah. that confidence, there that is, swagger. You've seen him rapping on the sideline. pretty good chance he was in the same bar as Urban Meyer. <laughs> oh, no. Pooped in his big boy pants. All right, the less fun part of the show. Oh, yeah. Unless you played against these players. No touchdowns for Tom Brady. Goes to Foxborough, finds some rain, and man, what a... Did you that see that? game should not have been close. Like, be, before the game, you just thought this is going to be really a one-sided affair, and it was not. Rain, rain hurt. He also had a pass that he put right into the basket for Antonio Brown that should have been a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Um. But, man, did you see these, like, because everybody was making a big deal out of this game, which, look, I was excited. I turned yes. the lights down, put the projector on. I was excited to sit down and have some popcorn and watch the return. But one of the props that, like, these books were putting out there was, you know, Who Brady. Who the record? No, it was Brady one touchdown. Oh. It was like this, you know. A gimme. It was like negative 1,100 or something silly, but it was like a gimme. And I was gotcha. like, you're looking at that and uh, didn't didn't throw a touchdown pass. You know, I wouldn't worry too much about that rainy game on the road emotions, but Baker Mayfield had a stinker against Minnesota. Um, Minnesota had been getting destroyed through the air. He had this brutal mess of yes. Odell. I mean, yes, there, he did. I, I basically stood up to celebrate the touchdown that was about to happen to Odell, and Baker just put. I did, it's like the not on the same page thing. Um, Big Ben had a problem with Juju on the same type of route, but. Yeah, it wasn't good for him. Nope. I would say Justin Fields improved, but I would not I would not put the word mass improvement in there. He got what? better. Mass improvement, but when you're improving from in the grave, I mean, now he, you're just you're you're still in the hospital. Yeah, 11 for 17 for 200 is not what I would call mass. I mean, Mike might be I completely disagree. Like, why why? Because this was the game plan. Like they they only let him throw the ball seventeen times and but that, I'm talking about for fantasy football. Oh yeah yeah. Be, I mean if yes he was totally he was completely held back uh, by Matt Nagy. Well I, he wasn't calling plays this week. 
Or yeah, well, yeah. So I'm gonna say the offense held him back. Well, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. Matt Nagy will never let you know if Laser <laughs> is calling the plan the plays or not. Uh, but they like he looked so much better. Uh, he had a couple like professional level deep passes to to Darnell Mooney. Allen Robinson is not Justin Fields' best friend, which is uh, unfortunate. We didn't see Fields really utilize his legs. Only three. Uh, three rushes for nine yards. But, he went from three point nine fantasy points to seven point three. Yes, for fan fantasy purposes, he did not improve. And but I mean, there's I, no I think reason. As to an NF there's no reason to roster him. Correct on a fantasy. Yeah, team. well, it, yeah. nine nine rushing yards, even in a game where he wasn't shellacked by a defense, that was the baseline of hoping he's going to go out there and have 30 or 40 sure. rushing yards every game. That's not happening. Uh, yeah, but Fields should not be rostered. And this was the Detroit Lions. This was yes. a matchup that, um, you know, if you can't play him here and you couldn't, then you're not going to play him anywhere. And you should be you should be actively hoping for Andy Dalton's return. If you have if Allen, you have Robinson, if you have Allen yeah. Robinson, even Darnell Mooney, you need more than 200 passing yards. You need touchdowns. So, I don't know, but would they have let – Dalton throw more like Darnell Mooney had yes Darnell Mooney had almost 100 yards like in the first half he was on his way and then they just stopped throwing I think they ran the ball almost 40 times well you got your your starting running back is now injured yeah and so and the, and Matt Nagy came out and said Andy Andy Dalton's our starter uh, we'll see what happens health wise Dalvin Cook this was unfortunate he was active but he was not utilized a ton he was not 100 no. percent he did have six targets. I mean, he'll be the same old Dalvin <sighs> Cook, but he needs to get right. Yeah, but this was, this sucked, man. This felt like a rope a dope. You're going to play him next week junk. against Detroit, regardless. Yes, of you are. His, if he's active. And DeAndre Swift, eight for sixteen. It seemed like he was probably game script proof, and then he ended up with a game with only four for thirty three through the air. He, which just means to me, he's a good target. Um, as far as a, you want to trade for a guy, you, you DeAndre Swift was. Terrible for fantasy this week. Uh, still had the six targets, so I, I'm yeah. not worried long term at all. Jamal Williams ended up 14 for 66, so he had more carries. What is happening with Chris Carson? 13 for 30. Another player that we, Mike and I were like, "Oh, Chris Carson yeah. must be hurt," because Alex Collins was taking drives and looking good, looking fine. Yeah, I mean, no real. He had the touchdown difference, right? I mean, he got 10. Uh, carries to 13 for Carson right and he 44 yards 4.4 a carry I don't know Is no split? targets for Carson through four weeks he's got six total so this what? seems like problem man uh, the only thing I can think of is last week Chris Carson left the game I think it was a leg injury and he looked at the time he looked pretty shook up and then it just kind of got swept under the rug of oh no well, Chris Carson is fine that would be the only thing I could think of is perhaps he's not a hundred percent, and so they they have other players on the team that that are are capable like Alex Collins, so they went to them a little bit more. I have three panic alarm players in succession here. Okay, um, what did we establish about the DefCon system? Do we do we know one, how it actually works? One means that it, we're at I think you're fully panicked. So let, let's do it this way. I'll read the name. You tell me whether to hit the the button. Okay. 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 <clears throat> Miles Sanders, seven for thirteen, three targets, three for thirty-four. Oh. I didn't mention it, but Gainwell had a game. Man, do I hit the button or not? Yeah, you hit the button. <laughs> the, the reason you <laughs> the reason you hit the button is because not nothing to do with Miles Sanders. If you watch the game, Miles he Sanders looks, looks like he's got juice. He looks great. He's finishing runs run strong. Um. But we've talked about this forever. Opportunity, more important than talent for fantasy. Sanders has the talent. He is not getting the opportunity, and it doesn't. I don't see why it would change all of a sudden. Um, they've got into the next two weeks. Our Carolina, whose defense looks great, their rush defense is maybe second only to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right. I, I know. Who I'll they just, play I'll, next? I'll just hit this button ahead of time. Miles Gaskin. <laughs> Yeah. So Miles Gaskin was two for three on the ground, had no targets. Uh, let me just let me break some news right here, right now. Your season's over, Miami. It's over. Ooh, wow. Op there was optimism coming into the year. Your season is over. What if they get Deshaun Watson? 
he he's not playing. He won't play. I I firmly believe he. Will I mean, not play. I think. Look at this point, they're throwing things at the wall. Malcolm Brown, sixty-seven percent of snaps. That should come with a, some concession papers on the year. <laughs> I mean, that's not a solution. Malcolm Brown is not a solution. So, Jacoby Brissett's not going to be able to get it done. They, are they going to go beat Tampa next week? Oh, no. Nope. Nope. Are they going to beat Jacksonville in Jacksonville? Probably not. It'll be, be a game. Yeah. 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 Is Urban Meyer still the coach? Yeah. Yeah, then Miami will win. They should have won that last game. They really, yeah, they exactly. They should have won the they game. They should have beat the Cardinals, too. That's bad coaching. Damian Harris. Do I hit the button? Uh, I don't I think so. I'm not as worried on Damian Harris. Ramondre Stevenson was not active. And J.J. Taylor was, and then he fumbled. So. Brandon, oh. Bolden, Brandon Bolden is the is the next man up, for sure. And Damian Harris, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he actually ran the – it wasn't like earth-shattering numbers, but as far as routes, he ran the most routes. He saw two targets – did he actually run the most, like, actually running routes? Yes, of okay. the running back. It, I, I could be mistaken, but I uh, I believe I came across that stat on Twitter. He also had 67% so of the rushing running back attempts, which is a good number. But then you look at his rushing attempts and you go, wait a minute, how, how can that be true? Because he can, didn't get the ball. You cannot run on Tampa Bay. No, you can't. Although Harris was sending up some red flags the week before. Brandon Bolden had six for 51. He is the James Wright replacement. And I've talked to people from uh, Wright, like I think Saturday, I talked to somebody from New England, and they said it's going to be Bolden. It was Bolden. Right. Stevenson wasn't there. They trust Bolden. He was real close to a touchdown on one of those. So he is a pickup on tomorrow's show. Sure. And, and um, uh, I, there, there, are, there are reasons <laughs> to be concerned. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to say it, but I was going to end up in some kind of double negative. I do have concerns about Harris, uh, so I'm not saying there's – I'm not full panicking, uh, but he, like this is it's not a DEFCON 1 for him, but probably a 3. Apparently DEFCONs are all related to nuclear war. I didn't realize that. Really? really? Yeah, I mean, from, what, from no. what Al, the nuclear war expert over there, has told me, hmm. these are nuclear war levels. So like DEFCON 1 is nuclear war is about to happen. Ooh. And then DEFCON 2 is like it's... it's it so might, now we're it, back to flipping it to the other way because, like, is he going to go nuclear? Oh. You know what I mean? I, I think we're, like, too many levels deep. This is a real, <laughs> this is a real Fartball Jones nickname situation. Like, is that fair? I mean, poor Tim Patrick, right? Yeah. First, we say your name's too boring. So we give you a nickname that's Fireball Jones, mm -hmm. which opens you up to a very obvious Fartball Jones if yeah. you're not good. A very... Well done, and, Farball and, Jones. And why be Farball Jones when the real fault lies in, in Drew Locke? Yeah. It's not your fart. It's not your fart. <laughs> that it's was not, an accident. <laughs> it's not your fart. Oh, no. Not your it's not your fault. <laughs> it's funny because what I was... The it's joke true, that I, though. It's not his fart. The joke that I was going for was I was going to say, it's not your fault, fart, but it's hard to say that. It's not your fart. It's not your fault. It's always Drew Locke's <laughs> fault. If you're in a room and you smell something, look oh, for Drew Locke. Look, why are we so mean to? Oh, because he stinks. Um, he stinks because he farts all the time. Melvin Gordon nine for fifty six. Javante Williams seven for forty eight. When the Broncos can run the football, both will be interesting. When they can't run the football, both will be disappointing. You're not going to have a great floor. Because they're sharing the backfield, and what's upsetting is, and they both look good. Javante Williams had a carry in this game, <laughs> where I, I, my pun is intended because he carried multiple defenders about ten he, yards. He picked I've up done. a Pop Warner team and carried him <laughs> thirteen <laughs> yards. I've literally never seen in the <laughs> NFL. Like I've seen this in Pop Warner. I've seen this in high school football. I've never seen someone where a defender is literally. Holding their Piggy, waist, he's, he's a piggyback holding ride. their waist, and just and then the running back is running with them like like it's just a training sled. Williams. Like slow me down a little bit, and I'm going to run through. It's it amazing. We've got these little numbers. He was the strongest man I've ever seen. It was awesome. We've got these little number cards at the table, and mm -hmm. I'm starting to wonder: if, Does the coaching staff use these to perfectly manage the workloads for Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams? So that they have exactly the it's same amount a, of touches. It's a every, chalkboard. It's a chalkboard. Yeah, and so they run off the. You have to yep. write your own number yeah, on it. Have, as you jog off the field, you you put your little, 
your little checkup, and then you get back in line. I mean, it's really hard for me to say who I want more moving forward because you want to answer Javante, right? Yeah. Because uh, untapped potential in the unseen, but I really think if they're both healthy, they're just going to do this all year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The I lean. I still lean Javante. Of it's a long season, and Melvin Gordon is older, so it would it, it won't be surprising that if in a month that Melvin Gordon, you're like, oh, he's slowing down out there. He's taking too much punishment. Tony Pollard, ten I mean, for sixty-seven. Is, no I, targets. I he, he, that, that's a yeah. I mean, that's compared very to dis- starting him. Very, very sure. disappointing. You're talking about you know six point seven fantasy points. Not someone that you wanted to have in your lineup. And he is a player that I think a lot of a lot of fantasy managers are are throwing him in their flex. And and this is fine. It, it, Kareem Hunt is awesome. Kareem Hunt back to back great weeks. You're gonna get <clears throat> a game like this from Kareem Hunt where he scores six point seven fantasy points and because mm-hmm. uh, he is the backup for his team. Chuba Hubbard, disappointing if you were counting on him. 13 for 57, just two targets. So this that, is... Yeah, that part sucks, but also Darnold had two rushing touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. What, what's your confidence level starting Chuba against Philadelphia? Philadelphia has given up, I think, two straight 100-yard games. It's it's still high. Yeah, it, it's you, a flex option. 15 opportunities from the running back position. I would. I'm very interested. All right, Devontae Adams and Cooper Cup took a week off from carrying your fantasy team. Six for 64 for Adams, five for 64 for Cup. Who cares? 11 targets, 13 targets. These guys, yeah. it just wasn't their week, but you're not worried at all. You're not moving in a different direction. Stafford missed Cup on multiple touchdowns, mm-hmm. uh, but you're right. Now, this one's more interesting because yeah, DeAndre scary. Hopkins has seven uh, had seven targets, four for f- four 67. Let me give you two narratives. You decide which one you agree with. Okay? Okay. Number one, DeAndre Hopkins is the same. Don't worry about it. He, he was injured for a game. Now he got Ramsey treatment for half of this game. Had some targets with Ramsey on him. Whatever. Option two, he's not the yardage leader through, for the Arizona Cardinals through four weeks. All four wide receivers are heavily involved. A.J. Green has 24 targets. Hopkins, 25. A.J. Green has 248 yards. Hopkins has 225. Kirk is involved, 18 targets. MVP level Kyler means distribution across everybody, including Chase Edmonds, including Max Williams. They're averaging 400-plus yards, 30-plus points a game, so there's a lot to go around. Everything will be fine. But Kyler's probably going to distribute the ball, and he's got more options than he had last year. This one is is very, very scary. Um, for sure, because what you've always known about DeAndre Hopkins, whether he's uh, great or not great, he's one of those 150 target guys. You know what I mean? The targets are just mm-hmm. so there. And through four, they're so there. And through four weeks, he's on a 17 game pace of 106 targets. If that comes to fruition, he will be a devastating letdown he'll still have his good games he's he there's nothing from this last game that looked wrong or bad you know he he might have been ribbled out there but he didn't look it he he there was nothing that I felt like Hopkins needed to do more of it was just he wasn't getting the targets and and look the Cardinals beat the best team in the NFL and so you can't really argue with it can that you being, say whooped please yes they whooped Thank the you. the second best team in the NFL and um it was a shellacking but here's the thing. Last year, were you happy with DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah. The wide receiver five on the season? Yeah. He had seven games last year where he did not reach the top 36 at wide receiver. He was not consistent last season. Trade right? target? I, I, I mean, you got to call your shot. But if, I, if it was me, he would be a trade target on a buy low. I'm not paying up for Hopkins. Uh, Hopkins. I'm not seeing this as an opportunity to say, hey – you usually you can't get a hold of this guy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pay out the nose and finally be able to acquire him. But I am gonna kick the tires and see if I can maybe make a, a trade up for Hopkins and hope better days are ahead of him. Um, because we saw this in seven games last year. Allen Robinson, three Whoa. for sixty three, the wide receiver forty nine on the week. Might need that button, man. I mean that yeah. one. <laughs> yes. Through four weeks, he's the wide receiver 61. He has 
13 for 149. He has scored once. If he hadn't scored that one time, he would have been as more relevant than Khalif Raymond. I mean, you're talking about a decline in targets. Yes. And production. He's been the wide receiver 67, 45, 78, and 50. I mean, you, you have had bust game, bust mm -hmm. game, bust game, bust game. Mooney was the wide receiver 13 this week. He was the first read. So, I mean, I, I would completely agree with you, Andy. If, if you have Allen Robinson, you are desperately hoping that Andy Dalton is back this next week. He is the only hope, I, I believe, for Allen Robinson. Or you're hoping that it's field so that it's an easy bench. You know what I mean? Because sure. maybe you're worried Andy Dalton comes back and you're going to be tempted to play him, and maybe you just shouldn't play right, Allen let, Robinson. Let right me now. make life really hard on you guys. Perfect. More than I normally do. Odell Beckham Jr., Allen Robinson, rest of the season. Odell Beckham. Allen. Okay. Was that an, a contractual obligation for you to no, opt no, out of it, Odell? It, it wasn't. I mean, Okay, just making sure. Does Allen Robinson look bad to you on the field? Does he look on special routes, anything? It's I think really, this is it's Chicago. been hard to read it. I don't think so. No, I think he looks like the same Allen Robinson. That's, that's my point. I'm still going to trust the man. I think this is a Bears offensive situation. Tyler Boyd. Allen Robinson. <laughs> I told you I'd make life hard on you. Mike's laughing out of pain. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how – I don't know how you take Allen Robinson over Tyler Boyd. Like, there's there will be – there will be actual target volume, and the target volume for the Bengals, I project to go up as the season progresses. Yeah, uh, you you very well could be right. And obviously, the last two weeks, Tyler Boyd has been much, much better. Jacoby but that, Myers. That coincides with the last two Sorry. weeks of of not having T. Higgins. Yeah. The first two weeks when T. Higgins was there, Tyler Boyd was wide receiver 74 and 41. But I'm saying, was, I, I think that the, the passing volume will go up. As, sure. as Burrow is healthy, I mean, coaches, coaches usually fall into their – old habits and they the Bengals have been very run heavy to start this season off uh but it, I but in the past they were but well, no Joe Mixon is gonna hurt uh, that under Taylor they were gonna, very passive I was gonna say uh with Mixon probably being out this week they'll they'll throw the ball more this coming week for sure Tyler Boyd who was the last name you Robert Woods oh that's grody no um <laughs> Robert Woods scored yeah. I would take out. Do we have? Uh, I would. Do I would we take, have the garbage man drop anywhere because. Oh, the yes. garbage man can. I, man, those are. It was like seconds to go. Robert Woods shows up. Yeah, I. I feel like I would rather have Woods just taking the offense, right? Taking Stafford in hopes that if they're a team that could put up thirty points on the reg, then oh man. Sorry gross. about that one, guys. That one. That one hurts. Are you worried about CD Lamb? Two for 13, um, second disappointing week in a row. I was bringing it up to Jason. The sophomore narrative is not holding true this year. So far. So far, through four weeks. Through four we but there's a lot uh, of names in that talk group. Talk to Justin Jefferson. I mean, It's funny to think of him as a sophomore yeah. guy because he <laughs> broke out so much as a rookie. Jeff like, he doesn't even count as a sophomore. Jefferson has been really good but not spectacular, production-wise. But, uh, but like C.D. Lamb, you know, J I, Judy got hurt. Uh, you know, I, I just – Lamb I'm a little worried about. I'm not that worried uh, about Lamb. I mean, we brought it up in this game how much the, the Dallas Cowboys were running the ball on Carolina, and uh, they didn't need much. They they were in the lead, and, and you had the same thing happen to Philly the, the week before where the, the, the boys just went in there and, and Isn't that the worry, kicked though? the tar out of them. Um is that the worry that it could go away from the passing game? I, I, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe the hope that CeeDee Lamb is involved in a team that has to try to score 50 every week, maybe that is gone. But CeeDee Lamb looks great. He had the first two weeks were great, and we bring this up all the time. All wide receivers are inconsistent. So, yes, he had two down weeks in a row, but there's nothing you don't like from Dak. There's nothing you don't like from CeeDee Lamb on the field. There's nothing you don't believe about in the Cowboys' offense. So, yeah, I'm just going to say these were two of his down weeks, and I, he would be a trade target for that, me. That's hard, though, because, yes, all wide receivers are inconsistent, but you have to do something to read. Like, he's never had a consistent period of his career yet. So we haven't seen – we have a lot of ambition for CeeDee Lamb coming into the season, 
but it's still narrative street until he does it. So like being, I think it's just hard to appropriate a certain level to him until he proves it. Sure. The first two weeks were helpful to that in the sense that he, he looked pretty darn good those first two weeks. And that third week, if he is one yard further on a catch and he ends 67 and a score, I mean, that changes how you feel about CeeDee Lamb. Yeah, I, I'm personally not worried about CeeDee I'm not buying him, though, because you can't run on Tampa. So that first week, they threw the ball like 9 billion times. And since then, they've been able to run, and he's been kind of pushed aside. So I'm not trading for him. You would trade for him. Yeah. Um, Tyler Lockett, 4 for 24, another disappointing week. Mm -hmm. Adam Thielen, 3 for 46, disappointing. Godwin, just 3 for 55. We talked about that game. Um, no. Brandon Ayuk was 1 for 15. Woof. Yeah. Um, if you – you don't have to drop Brandon Ayuk. But, but you don't have to roster him. But you don't have to keep him. <laughs> I mean, it's just – it's all about your options, right? Like, you still want to – if you want to buy into the thought that uh, maybe something changes with Trey Lance and, and some miracle happens, that, I, mean, I, I, see that, I don't mind benching him. I see four names here of disappointments, Cortland Sutton, Brandon Ayuk, Odell Beckham Jr., and Brandon Cooks. Ayuk would be at the last of the list. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Marvin Jones, brighter days ahead with no DJ Chark. Um, Juju was awful. You might have thought without Claypool that it could be better. It wasn't because yeah. Big Ben's there. Well, eight targets, man. Eight targets turned into two receptions and 11 yards. Yeah, but, man, have you seen Deontay? Yeah. Deontay's unbelievable. He's a great wide receiver. I mean, he and his target share and his catch percentage, I mean, he is just automatic. If he's mm -hmm. in the lineup, he's automatic. Uh, Rondale Moore, do you, are you cutting him? Uh, Rondale Three for 28 Rondale. I think I would probably move, move on from Put the Cardinals wideouts in order. Uh, Cardinals wideouts in order. Hopkins, Uja Green, <laughs> Christian Kirk and Rondale Moore. That's the order. Robbie Anderson had 11 targets. There were some signs of life here. Five for 46. Um, disappointing result, but nice to see the targets. He's still obviously a, a part of the offense. <laughs> <laughs> I think Christian McCaffrey might play next week. Th and, oh, and that's the question. Please. I, I think please. he might play next week. What was it? Two targets for Chuba? Yeah. And 11 for Robbie right. Anderson? I, it's what we said, man. I mean, you uh, – Trade him. If, if Christian McCaffrey is back next week, I would be terrified to see those 11 targets evaporate back down to three or four. And if you don't have McCaffrey and you have Robbie, hope that McCaffrey misses one more week. Yeah. Robbie comes through with a little more on another big target volume him. and then move him. Yeah. Um. Travis Kelsey, you don't care. Down game for the first time in forever. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, four for 42. So the last two weeks, holding the jock strap, he had targets. I mean, yeah. eight targets. He did come out in the middle of the week, and I almost brought it up. He came out and said, look, defenses are playing to, to stop me. Is that a concern with the way that these games are going? Or, you, you know? I, I, th I think it's going to be one of those – some defenses are going to look to bracket him, and and some aren't. Uh, we don't know the game plans of the coaches ahead of time, but not every team is going to sit here and go, we need to double cover T.J. Hawkinson. But in this game, I remember one of these targets down the field, really nice target, and just two guys right on him. Not worried. Uh, are you done with the ton? Robert Tunyon, seven targets, but two for eight. He's been the tight end, 42, 45, 34, and five in week two. Um, I think you can probably move on. Yeah, I would much prefer Dawson Knox. All right. Uh, didn't see the game we hoped from from Evan Ingram. No, no, we didn't. Um, oh, they need to get Kadarius Tony the ball more. Yeah, he's they probably good. do. He's good, uh, and that team can compete. I mean, they're probably they might be the second best team in that division. How long do you hold on to Kyle Pitts? How long you if, play him if, every week? So if Dawson Knox is out there, Dosekis is out there, you're gonna keep rolling with. Yeah, and that's not I, – I know it's hard now to defend Kyle Pitts. I'm defending him on merit. I'm defending him on targets. Yeah. So he's going to get into the end zone, and he's going to have more targets than other tight ends. Dawson Knox has flashed before, to be to be fair. Now, he's he's a now boom shakalaka because he's three weeks in a row. But there were – I mean, we spent off seasons talking about Dawson Knox before. Um, Kyle Pitts has been target in nine targets at, for a tight end. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to keep throwing him out there. He's got the Jets next week, so – no, I'm not playing. I don't think I play Max Williams over Kyle Pitts. No, you would. I'd stay the course with with Pitts. You do need to score. I mean, it would be nice. I mean, uh, you know, Hawkinson had a couple non-scoring, non 
catching games in a row and we're sticking with him. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Evan Ingram didn't do anything to make you want to stick with him. No. Tyler Higby had a, a tough game. Kittle was four for 40 on 11 targets. Kittle's a little bit of a you, – you should be worried mm -hmm. just because the quarterback transition is happening this week. And he's been banged up. He hurt his knee in the game, came in with an injury. So you're starting him every week, but you're doing it with a slight grimace. I think, man, if I could turn – if I had George Kittle and – like I'm, I'm still in on on Hawkinson. I'm still in on that target volume. If I could f flip George Kittle for Hawkinson plus, I think at this point I would do it. You have that's very fair. You, you have the the you have the transition to Trey Lance, and look as as excited as I am for Trey Lance, we know that generally mobile quarterbacks hurt their fantasy options, and rookie quarterbacks really hurt the fantasy options. They Historically, rookies just – they don't sustain multiple pass catchers. And so you, maybe it's Kittle. Maybe it's Debo for, for Trey Lance. But you have this – you have a matchup against Arizona, and then you have a bye week. So this is – these are two weeks that you don't really – you don't really want to start Kittle next week with uh, with Trey Lance's first start, and then you can't play him with the bye week. I don't know. I, I, it's interesting. That, that's Time something I might be – as far as like game theory of fantasy football – uh, that's something I might be willing to do. What's funny is after the bye week and another week for Kittle to get healthy, they may be back to Garoppolo too. It's funny because we looked at the bye week as the transition to Lance might happen there, but based on how Lance plays the next two weeks? The next week. Yeah. The next week. I mean, if he goes in and, and shellacks – Doesn't look ready. The only undefeated team in the NFL. Oh, I see, yeah. Um, Then it's it would be hard to pull it, pull it are back Are they the from. only undefeated team? They are. Interesting. Who, wait, who? The Cardinals? Yeah, that's right. Really? No one uh, else? No. I believe that is true. I oh. believe that is true. Well, if and you if, believe I believe it, <laughs> if I believe it, then it is correct. <laughs> All right. Uh, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. Justin Jefferson signed jersey, $61. Hmm. Ends Tuesday night. Chris Godwin. Sorry. Uh, <sighs> let's talk about Chris Godwin's jersey. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? I was going to say the, the Raiders are 3-0. and out. So they oh. could still be uh, four and zero after tonight. So, as of this moment, they are not the only undefeated team. All right, uh, sign up on Pristine Auction. Use the code Ballers. They're the only four and zero team. That's right. <laughs> and uh, you can get a ten dollars credit. We're going to close this thing out. <laughs> Waivers show tomorrow. Do not miss it. Lots of names to talk about. Lots of cut. Like send us your drop decisions because we're going to help you sort it out tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.